one of the things that you can do on your farm to improve your fertility program is use plant tissue analysis. We're going to talk today about how to use it, when to use it, and what you can learn on your farm. There are a lot of different things to learn from plant tissue analysis, but the big thing for me is you're getting a snapshot of what's happening right now in those plants. If you only pull one sample all through the year, you're only going to have a snapshot of, well, that one week in June that I pulled a sample, I guess it was dry for a few weeks around there, or I guess we had tons of rain right around that time. It doesn't tell you very much. So what we would suggest, and, and what's worked well for us on our own farm, is to pull samples throughout the season. With corn, we want to start right at emergence. And we always pull our plant tissue samples on Monday mornings. The reason why we do it, we want to be consistent with the time and consistent with the day. So we have every single week where we're getting this done, number one. And number two, we want to make sure that we are doing it at the same time of day because what you see in the plant can vary a little bit throughout the day. Not a lot, but a little bit. So Darren made this comment about, well, that week we had this thing. No, no, with plant tissue analysis, it's literally right now, this minute, that's what's in the plant. That's why we need lots of samples to go along from there. So with corn, we suggest starting right at emergence. The first Monday morning you find a plant up at all, you should be pulling plant tissue samples. Do that for at least eight weeks, preferably 12 weeks in a row every single Monday. The other reason why I say Mondays is then when you pull the plant tissue samples, you put it in the mail, it doesn't sit there over a weekend in some post office somewhere rotting. We'd like them to get to the lab as quickly as possible. With soybeans, we usually suggest waiting until a week or two before flowering. We don't generally see a lot of difference real early in the season, but if you want to start right after emergence with soybeans, you certainly can. Our suggestion is usually a week or two before flowering, get started then, and go for 8 to 12 weeks. All right, Brian just gave a lot of details there, and if you don't have a DVR or if you're not recording the show, you may say, whoa, where do you have a quick handy reference for me? You can go right to our website at agphd.com and click on the resources tab, uh, and you'll find a plant tissue analysis guide with a number of different crops. You may not be raising corn or soybeans that we've talked about here, but if you've got a different crop, you still can use plant tissue analysis to find out what's going on nutritionally in that crop. Uh, that would be one way to do it. The other thing is in the Ag PhD Insider magazine, if you subscribe to that, we talk about plant tissue analysis on a fairly regular basis and, and show what's going on, what we're working on with plant tissue analysis and what we're learning as well. All right, in terms of what we're learning, the number one thing is how much of each individual nutrient is there at every point during the growing season. And the reason why we want to do eight to 12 weeks is we want to get a general idea of how we did during the course of the season and make adjustments for next year. Now, there are some people who will say, all right, well, if I'm a little low on boron this week, I wanna go do some foliar feeding. And you can do that. And that does work in some cases. But if you say, wow, I'm ridiculously low, you're probably not gonna catch that plant back up. Just keep in mind with foliar feeding, you can only get a little bit into the plant. So if you've got irrigation, great. You can throw a little bit of fertilizer out there two, three times a week, every week for the next two months. That's awesome. For us in dry land, we aren't going to do that. I'm not going to go back out there 15 times to go spray a little bit of foliar fertilizer on. I can't make that much money back up. But when I, I realize, oh, I'm terribly short on potassium or zinc or something like that, I will make adjustments going into next year to get that fixed on a big scale. It really changed how we looked at fertility on our farm and where we put the priorities. It didn't mean we were going to spend more money. This is one of the things that some farmers I talk to say, well, then you're just going to want me to spend more money on fertilizer. That's not it at all. Maybe your budget is $100 an acre and you say, how best can I spend the $100? It may mean, you know, instead of putting $30 over here on phosphorus, I'm going to shift some of that same money and put it on potassium or put it on zinc or whatever nutrient is short in your crop. And all of a sudden you get more yield and you only spent the same amount of money or possibly even less. The number one question we get about plant tissue analysis is, what level do I actually need in the plant at each and every growing point? Well, we don't really know that, and no lab does either. What we've found from labs is basically if they say you're sufficient, you're just average from all the samples that have come in. That doesn't necessarily mean you're sufficient for 200 bushel corn or 300 bushel corn or even 100 bushel corn. It's just an average of all the samples that have come in. So what we would encourage you to do is just start building your own database, start looking at your points, talk to other high yield farmers, and really start to try to fine tune this thing. But 
you can see the glaring differences. On our farm, when we first started doing plant tissue analysis, we were ridiculously high on nitrogen. We were ridiculously low on potassium, boron, and zinc. Okay, I don't have to be that smart a guy to figure out, you know what, if I've got all this data showing me I'm crazy low on three nutrients, I need to put more dollars there. And if I'm crazy high on one nutrient, I should probably pull back on that one just a little bit and start to refine my program. So your take home message today is plant tissue analysis is really good. If you can pull a plant tissue test from every one of your fields on a weekly basis, that would be awesome. But most farmers will start with just one field taking a high yielding area and a low yielding area, pulling a plant tissue analysis each week during the growing season for at least 10 or 12 weeks. Send those samples in for analysis. If you have questions, once you get those results back, you can email us radio at agphd.com. We answer those types of questions each week on our radio program. Also, you can bring those results to an Ag PhD winter workshop next winter, and we'd be happy to take a look at them too. Well, one of the most important things to getting high yields for your farm is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to do it on your farm coming up later in the show.